Okay, everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're following straight on now with the rest of this Mosquito cockpit build. If you missed the previous part where we got this uh, cockpit to this stage, then you can go back by following the link at the top right of the page if you've missed that one. And you'll see how I got the uh, parts to uh, this point. But now we're ready to do the weathering washes to start the next stage of this assembly. And I'll be starting with the two main nose cockpit halves. And I'm going to be using uh, some MIG wash. This is an enamel wash. Uh, this is the Starship uh, wash from that range. And this is a really good colour for using on green uh, cockpit assemblies. It's a grey-brown colour and it really tones well with uh, this cockpit green, this XF71 I think it is. So we'll just give it a good mix and make a start doing these washes. You might have seen some people doing washes by just painting the wash all the way over the surface. Uh, which is one way of doing it, but I don't generally do that with my washes. I like to do more what's called a pin wash, which is just placing the wash gently into the detail. And I do that for a couple of reasons, really. The first is that I don't like to stain the surrounding paint too much. And the other one is it, I just think it wastes the wash. So I just put it where I want it to stay. So that'll do. We just need to let that dry. I let these washes dry for a full day. They are an enamel wash, but uh, even so, I like to make sure that they're perfectly dry. If you try and remove this wash while it's still wet, there is a tendency just to take too much away. Whereas a dry wash stays in the recesses, uh, which is what we want. We want to highlight those recesses. That's most of the parts uh, washed. I can't do this one at the moment. This is the pilot seat and the bulkhead here. I'm a bit out of sequence here because uh, I'm not able to put the wash on this, which is the pilot's seat and this lower bulkhead. And that's because it needs to have a couple of yellow circles or discs painted onto it. Uh, those yellow discs signified armour plate on RAF uh, aircraft cockpits. Uh, the most obvious one that people will know is on the rear headrest of the pilot's seat on the Lancaster. A very distinctive uh, yellow dot in the middle of the headrest, which was obviously an armour plate. The Mosquito doesn't have one here on this headrest, but there are two on this bulkhead. And there's a small one on this navigator's bulkhead and a pair on the rear face of this machine gun bay bulkhead. So I've already masked those off. Uh, and I'm painting them because I think it'll just give a better result. The discs are supplied in the Tamiya decal sheet. But wherever possible, I want to avoid the use of the Tamiya decals. I don't really like them. Uh, and I think I'll get a better result by painting them on. So really, I should have done that before I applied the weathering wash to this navigator's bulkhead. Uh, but I think we'll be all right. It doesn't uh, matter too much. So we'll get the discs cut out. And my uh, disc cutters are just these punches. 
this is a six millimeter uh, diameter punch which is just the right size for masking off these discs. The one on the Navigator's uh, bulkhead is a little bit smaller, I think it's about three millimeter. Uh, so we'll need to do that to the right size. So I'll get those cut out and then we'll get them applied. Uh, get the yellow painted and we can catch up with ourselves and do the weathering wash after that. Here I've got the uh, disc punched out of a small piece of masking tape. The easiest way I find to fit uh, masking discs uh, in particular is to actually put the disc cut out in the position that you want the paint to go and then apply the actual mask over that. And that's just because it's easy to see then exactly where you're going to get the masking. So I'll do that for roundels, for example, if I'm painting roundels. If you apply the disc into the position first, you align the mask in exactly the right place. Just burnish that down and then we can carefully just peel the disc away. And we now know that that, when painted, is going to be in exactly the right position. For masking roundels, I'd always use this technique. It just makes sure that uh, the roundel ends up in exactly the right position. have to be very careful removing that mask because it's over some photo etch. I don't want to pull it off. Okay, that's ready for some paint. These two circles are slightly different diameters. Uh, all the others are six millimeter. This is a five and this is a three millimeter. Just in case you want to cut uh, some masks off if you're doing this kit yourself. So I can get all these circles painted in some yellow. I'm just gonna use some Tamiya XF3 yellow, matte yellow. Uh, but I'll have to come back and give it another coat of va uh, gloss varnish uh, so that I can do the weathering wash. I'm starting to add some of the Barracuda cockpit placards now, just to detail some of these instrument panel pieces and other pieces around the cockpit. The decals are very, very tiny. Using some uh, microset first of all. I'm not going to be able to use all of these because they are a slightly different configuration to the plastic moulding in the cockpit. This instrument here at the top is from the Barracuda Cal set. It is provided as a decal in the Tamiya uh, decal sheet as well. The problem with the Tamiya decal is that it's a modern instrument. Uh, it must have been during their research for the model. They must have inspected uh, a museum exhibit or something like that. I don't know which one they used, but anyway, it's got the wrong instrument in, but Barracuda provide the correct instrument, which is this one. 
but it does need modifying it doesn't fit straight in you have to I've had to trim a red circle from the outside because that red circle was just too big to fit on this console so you just carefully cut the red away and the decal fits after that they're a good fit which is just as well because we've got three dials molded into the Tamiya console so those three decals had to fit precisely into those and they pretty much do if they hadn't we'd have had to cut them up I think the instrument that fits here on this slightly raised moulding is only provided in the Tamiya kit so I'm going to be using that one they're all settling down nicely and where to go with them yet I've got some placards to fit onto the uh, throttle quadrant here so we'll do those next doing a number of parts like this just enables you to move around from one to another adding a bit more microsol here and there until they're all settled down These are the armoured panels that uh, I masked off earlier on. Just given them a coat of Tamiya XF3, flat yellow. Carefully remove the masking. So they'll have a gloss coat now and then I'll be able to do the uh, weathering wash on the whole panel. I'm going to uh, use some decal for the footboards. This is some wood grain decal. Uh, it's from Aeromaster. It's a really old sheet. Uh, and I'm not sure it's going to be available anymore, but there are alternatives on the market. Uh, HGW do a sheet as well. Various sheets, in fact, this is a 32 scale sheet of plywood light plywood and they do all sorts of different patterns that you can use Once the decals are dry I can do the gaiter around the control column which is a dark green colour but obviously I'm going to have to let the decals dry before I go anywhere near that so we'll just put that to one side and we'll come back to it in a while. Ok we can put the instrument panel together now and the first thing I'm going to have to do is give all these parts a coat of satin varnish just to take the gloss off them. I've uh, obviously used a gloss varnish before decaling these parts. So they need to be done again with some satin or semi-matte and also the instrument bulkhead itself 
needs to be uh, matted down. So we'll do all that, we'll come back to the bench and we'll uh, put this instrument panel together after that. So here are the uh, parts ready to be put together for the instrument panel. I've uh, varnished the bulkhead itself with some flat varnish, that's Tamiya uh, lacquer flat varnish, which gives a really nice finish to these parts. And the instrument panels and consoles themselves uh, have had a coat of Tamiya lacquer semi-gloss varnish. So it just gives a little bit of contrast. Uh, but the finish now isn't as glossy as the Edward pre-printed parts, which are these. There's a little bit of detail painting to do on these before I actually attach them to the bulkhead. We have to pick out the instrument, uh, the engine instruments here, or the bezels of the engine instruments in uh, yellows and red colours. So we'll do that and then we have to do some detail painting of this centre console as well. This is Tamiya X8 Lemon Yellow. So I'm just picking out the bezels themselves in the etched panel. Just pick out the bezels of the engine instruments with some red. This is Tamiya Lacquer LP21, it's the Italian red. It's slightly duller, they do a bright red as well that I'll use for some of the other buttons and switches uh, on the cockpit. I don't want these to be too bright. That's the bezels uh, picked out. So I'll start by fixing the actual panels. These are the Tamiya transparent parts which have the Tamiya decals on the reverse face so they're showing through. This group of three levers are for the Bombay doors uh, undercarriage and flaps. So we just have to pick those out. This is a bit of flat aluminium, which is a Tamiya lacquer colour. The lacquer metallics paint really well with a brush. This is the LP50 which is the bright red. This is the central console. We're going to need to do a bit of detail on this as well. But that can be done once it's in position.
With all the detail painting done, I can now fit the uh, etched steel panels to these transparent parts. And I'm just going to use some uh, MIG acrylic glue for this. I don't want to use CA because I'd be worried about that fogging the dials. It's uh, time to fit the rudder pedals. These are the etch brass rudder, rudder pedals that uh, I made from the Edward set. And I'm just using the Tamiya rudder pedal here just to make sure that I get these positioned properly. So I'll fit the left hand one first. That can be removed now. I'll just put those to one side just to let them set. They're very fragile, delicate. And I'll be much happier when they're installed in the cockpit. These parts are all elements of the drift site and this uh, part below is a map case. So we we'll, uh, can get all these together, they've all been painted separately. That will eventually sit on top of the uh, map holder like that. So I won't fit this just yet because it has to fit flush onto the fuselage side. And I won't know where that is until I've got this uh, bottom piece in position. So we'll just leave that off for the moment. Just going to add a little bit of detail to the fire extinguisher. We've got a spare data placard here. Um, I think it's a Sea Fury kit, yeah. This is the navigator's bulkhead. I'm just adding one or two bits of etch from the Edwards set.
This is the navigator seat, cushion and seat back. This has just been uh, sprayed with Tamiya's XF27 black green and I've just dry brushed it with some RAF green which is just a bit paler, a bit more olive and that's just added a little bit of wear to the outside of the seat cushions. That looks nice. We just glue the seat base into position first. At this stage I can take the masking off these windows. The wash that I applied to the fuselage has uh, dried now. It's been uh, probably a couple of days, I think, since this was applied. So we'll just rub it away with this uh, clean cotton bud. If the wash is very stubborn, you can uh, just dampen the cotton bud in a bit of white spirit, something like that just to bring the enamel wash off. So that's not wet, it's just dampened because this is quite dry now. And it just helps soften the enamel wash and bring it off. If it was over wet, the spirit would just run into the crevices where we want to keep the wash. So. It kind of defeats the object really, so just very faintly moistened. The base green is an acrylic colour, so the spirit isn't going to affect that paint finish. So that's just how I like it anyway. It's a much a personal taste, the amount of weathering uh, to leave on. I just want to make a suggestion that uh, there's some shadow in that detail and it does bring the Tamiya detail out very nicely. All the parts where I've applied the uh, weathering wash can now be flat varnished and we can start to do some assembly after that. I've masked up around the gator here on the control column and painted it in Tamiya's XF27 which is black green and I'm just dry brushing that now with some RAF green which is XF81 again from Tamiya and that just highlights the detail and gives a bit of wear to the black green so I can remove the masking now as you can see I've used a bit of post-it note because I was a bit concerned about the wood grain decal that I used on the footboards because it was so old I wasn't sure how uh, grippy it was so I didn't want to put masking tape over the top of that but obviously the post-it notes are very much less adhesive so they were much safer for that.
Okay, we can get some of these detail parts fitted now. I'll start with this starboard uh, side wall. Nice positive location on these parts.
Okay, time to uh, tackle the seat belts now. These are manufactured by HGW, although they uh, were sold by Edward. It's 32846. I replaced the steel seat belts in the big sin set with these fabric ones. I think they look much better in this scale. I've already made the navigators belts so the two lap belts here and the main seat belt as well so they're ready to fit i'll do the pilot's seat belts on camera and i'll start with the lap belts they're the most difficult to do so i like to get those out of the way these uh, fabric belts have a paper backing so you have to separate them from the paper So they're nice and flexible. The buckles and fitments for these lap belts are very small. So these first ones are the attachments that actually fit to the bulkhead or to the seat. And the important thing with these is not to try and pick them up with tweezers, no matter how good the tweezers are, because the chances are they will ping off. So I just use a cocktail stick with some blue tack wrapped around it just to hold the belt buckle in place. You can see how small it is. And we have to thread the strap through that. To help it, I just make a bend in the fabric or just try and fold it over where you're going to want to thread it through just pinch it like that then once you've got it through you can put it down on the bench and I use a bit of thin super glue for this not too much because there is a danger of it seeping through and marking the fabric. Just fold the end over and hold it a while. Next we've got an adjustment buckle to fit in the centre of this strap. These pieces are a nice touch, they're the eyelets which you can see through the holes in the end of the straps. It's a nice little detail, really adds to these belts. The tricky thing is fitting them. I just apply some glue to the reverse side of the belt just to smear and then very carefully just drop the belt down just to make sure that the eyelets are central to the holes in the belt so that's one completed lap belt the pilot's shoulder harness is a little bit different to the navigators. It has this section in as well, whereas the navigators is just the plain shoulder strap.
want these buckles more or less at the same height. We don't want, we're not bothered about it being exact, but more or less equal lengths. get this on the correct side. So then we've got the pilot's harness. Some really nice detail on these uh, fabric harness sets. So we'll get those onto the seats now. We'll start with the navigator seat, fit the main harness first. Okay, that's the first one done. I'm always glad to get seat belts fitted, especially when I'm using super glue. There's a real danger of marking the uh, finish on the seats. Okay, safely fitted. That's always a big relief for me doing seat belts because there's a great danger of damaging the paint surface, especially when using super glue. But I've got away with that, they look nice. 
So I'll fit those two bulkheads into the cockpit assembly now. Uh, then they'll be nice and safe. Uh, they're not likely to get damaged, hopefully, uh, once they're fitted in position. I should have really fitted that part earlier on. It was uh, difficult to get in there, but uh, I've managed it in the end. The last part is this one, which is the first aid kit. This is uh, a replacement part from Edward. So there are no location holes for it. I'll get some uh, detailed photographs, some close-up photographs of these assemblies for the end of the video. Uh, but I'll just tape them together just to see what they look like into the fuselage halves. I think the cockpit will fit into the fuselage halves without any cement. There's some very positive uh, location holes for it, so I'm not going to risk any glue. This can't go together just yet, but um, I'll just see what the fit looks like. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how that's uh, gone together. So, nice finish on it. So that's a big step out of the way and it has taken an awful long time to get to that point. I've got to fit all the electronic equipment, the radios and so on, uh, in this back piece of the cockpit. But that won't be done until later because Tamiya have uh, the roof of the bomb bay also forms the uh, deck here at the back. So obviously that's a bit further along in the build. Okay, there we are, one mosquito cockpit and forward fuselage. And that's taken quite a while to do. As you know, there's lots of footage, three hour long episodes just covering that one part of the build and that's down to Tamiya's uh, real detail in the forward part of the kit. There's an awful lot of work, a lot of different colours to mix and paint uh, and it's just worth spending some time because the canopy on a Mosquito is quite open and we've got the access door at the side where you can see really well into the cockpit. So it's worth spending that time that we've taken on this. The next step with this will be to build the after fuselage uh, with the tail and the tail wheel bay in it. And that then attaches to these two forward fuselage halves before we insert the cockpit that we've built in these last three episodes. So hopefully by the end of the next episode we should have something looking like 
a completed fuselage. So that's it for this one. Just before I sign off, it is New Year's Eve and I want to wish everybody a very happy and peaceful uh, 2022. So that's it for now, everybody. Uh, look after yourselves and I'll see you next year. Bye for now.